Hi guys, welcome to Alcan ADV. I'm your host, Liam Berry. Today's video is going to be a little different from the recent fair. Uh, we're going to talk about electronics and camera equipment and navigation and all that fun jazz. Anyway, stick around. <laughs> So we'll start out with camera equipment. Uh, this is what I'm going to be documenting the trip with. I've got a couple of these uh, little Wei-Ti action cameras from Amazon. They're, they're fairly cheap. This one goes for about $50. Uh, this is the newer version of it that for some reason is cheaper. This is about $30. Anyway, I've used this quite a bit and, and I like it. Uh, this one I've used very little and we'll see how it does. I had to get a battery charger for these because uh, the only way to charge it is in the camera and if you're charging the battery in the camera why have a second battery right I've also got this little uh, Canon point-and-shoot camera it's just a basic camera um, but I've had this for a long time I like it and uh, I'll be taking it too I'll also be taking the phone I'm recording on the phone right now but uh, I'll be taking a lot of pictures and videos and of course uploading from the phone as far as accessories I've got a, a selfie stick this is a cheap Amazon selfie stick, but uh, looks like it'll work pretty good. I just want to be able to get a picture of me and the bike. And then also I've got a little uh, knockoff Gorilla Pod. Basically what I did, I just bought uh, on Amazon, I bought a little uh, kit that had a bunch of stuff in it, mainly uh, GoPro accessories, but also it had some of these. And so it's got the little, uh, well I'm, I'm filming on it right now, uh, the little clamp for a phone and a gorilla pod and a selfie stick and a bunch of other little junk that you don't need but whatever. So my phone is an iPhone SE which I guess is kind of like a 5S. It's, uh, it's a little outdated, it works just fine, um, but it's got 32 gigs of data. I don't have enough data to store all the pictures and videos I've, I'm going to take with it. So I got a thumb drive basically. This is a thumb drive. Uh, it has on this end, it's got a USB port I can plug it into a computer on the other end this is a lightning port or you know plug to plug into the phone I had to get an extender cable because of my phone case won't allow this plug to go in but whatever uh, so this you have to download an app onto the phone especially for this uh, but then you can back up your pictures back up your videos back up music uh, anything basically anything that you download onto the phone uh, you can back up onto this so that's that's pretty nice I also got, this is a card reader, uh, it's the same thing, it's got a USB on one side and a lightning port on the other side, um, and it'll read the micro SD and full size SD cards, which is good because my little uh, point and shoot Canon doesn't take the micro SD cards, it takes the big ones. That's going to be good because I'll be able to uh, take the photos off the cards from my cameras and use them in the videos. Well, that's enough of the camera gear. Let's get on to navigation. Now, I've got all kinds of options here. Uh, first, an atlas. This is my trusty road atlas that has been on a couple of road trips in a car with me, and uh, I'll be taking this entire thing on the motorcycle trip. Anyway, that's just me, but I like to use this, and, well, I haven't found a new one. I have an inReach. Uh, this is the Explorer Plus with uh, Topa Maps already on it. Um, I haven't used this very much, mainly I got it for the personal locator beacon uh, capability and uh, if I'm way off the road somewhere I'll be using this uh, more, but mainly for on the road stuff I'm probably going to lean toward uh, the map and then apps on the phone which is what I'm getting into in just a second. So while I'm sitting here with a paper atlas on my lap, uh, I'm going to talk about apps, navigation apps specifically on the phone. Uh, I downloaded a whole bunch basically to uh, go through and, and sort them out and see what I liked and throw away the ones I didn't, which has become an incredibly hard job. But anyway, I'm going to go through a few of the apps that I think are better than some and uh, their upsides and their downfalls and what I'll probably be using. Now I'm going to start off with a couple of nav apps that have uh, offline downloadable maps on them. Uh, first would be Magic Earth. This app is just about everything a nav app should be. It's got uh, all the downloadable apps that you could ever want for every country basically in the world and uh, all kinds of, it's got a search engine, 
you can uh, plan a route. Well, I don't think you can plan a route, but you can set a destination and then go there. Uh, it has voice navigation, you know, if you have headphones on. Anyway, it's, it's a pretty good app. I have one gripe with it. It takes up an incredible amount of storage. Um, the maps that you download, I have downloaded the Alaska and the lower 48 states. Uh, well, Hawaii might be included there, but um, and there are over nine and a half gigs worth of uh, data taken up by this one app. Now, my phone has 32 gigs of data on it, and uh, I can't afford to have a, a third of my phone taken up by one app, no matter how good the app is, unless that's the only thing I use the phone for. Now, the next thing is, uh, the next app is Copilot. It's, it's uh, along the same lines, it's a downloadable offline map cache, uh, but this one's a little different. This one, instead of having a map for each state, it has uh, a package of maps for North America. And the good thing is, North America only is about two and a half gigs worth of, worth of data. Um, there's a bad side to this one too. Uh, it had an update. The app had an update a little while ago. Before the update, it was a wonderful app. It had a search in it. It didn't have voice navigation. You could upgrade it uh, and get a premium version for, you know, some money uh, that had voice navigation, but the base model didn't. Uh, but it was a really nice little app. You could put a put a destination in it and go there and all that. Um, but after the update, they took just about everything away from the base model, and you have to buy the upgraded version to get just about any um, capability at all. And so it doesn't have a search. Uh, you can't put in. Uh, a destination and and make a route to go there well voice navigation is still still not there but whatever pretty much the only thing that's left is the map itself and since it's a GPS uh, it has the little blue dot that tells you where you are I probably will keep this one because I'm going down the Alcan I'm gonna need uh, an app that will be offline that I don't need to have cellular data um, to see so I'm, I'm probably gonna keep this one even though the app has pretty much gone to pot now that uh, you have to pot and buy it to get anything. Really. Now for a few that don't have offline maps but uh, are still useful in some way or another. Uh, I have Road Trippers. Road Trippers, right now what I'm using it for is to track my route or plan my route. Uh, it has a good route planner on it. Um, this is the free version again. I don't at this point, I'm not buying things from the App Store. I don't have my wallet and all that set up uh, through the phone. I'm just not quite to the point where I can put my entire personal information and bank accounts into a little computer that somebody else can shut off at any time. Anyway, I might, I might at some point, but not right now. Um, so Road Trippers, it's it's really good. Uh, I'm using it to plan the route out, and I may use it for navigation later. I don't know yet. Uh, I have Reaver. Reaver is a motorcycle app, basically a networking, you know, friends, like a Facebook-y kind of thing. I'm not real crazy about it. I got it because I was wondering about how well it would track a route, and I still have yet to determine that. Also, uh, Riser. Riser is, I don't know the difference between the two. It's basically the same thing as Reaver. Uh, it's a motorcycle-specific social networking uh, route tracking, route sharing app, and I'll probably delete it as well unless um, I come up with a really good reason why I need to uh, be able to track a route and save it. And if some, if if one of them has a good uh, saved routes capability, then I might keep it. I have a few extras here. I have iExit. Uh, I haven't I haven't figured this one out yet because. Alaska has no highways that have exits with truck stops and, and all this stuff on them. Uh, there are none. The closest thing to a freeway you've got is going straight through the middle of Anchorage or going from Anchorage up to Palmer and Wasilla. And that's about an hour drive and there are a few little towns on it but no truck stops. So I may use this one down south a little bit but that remains to be determined. My vision for this one is kind of a last ditch thing if I'm you know, late at night and going down the highway and don't know how to find a place to stay, you know, or something like that. 
I can just look for what's at the next exit. I have Scenic. Scenic is another uh, route tracker. I'm kind of playing around with it right now. I'm probably going to delete it, but uh, right now I'm still playing with it and seeing how I can track a route and all that. So that may be one that I keep, but I'm, I'm really doubting it. I have a couple that don't really come under nav apps, but that are similar and related. I have Gas Buddy, um, which will probably come pretty in pretty handy uh, down south uh, as far as finding gas and uh, averaging fuel prices. And I also have one called Park Advisor. Now, if you guys don't know about this one, uh, it's basically a campground finder. Uh, this thing looks like it'll be worth its weight in gold uh, on, on the trip, on the road because it has uh, an incredible database of uh, not only state parks, private parks, uh, state campgrounds, everything. Uh, it's got, in Canada, it's got the, uh, all the national parks and provincial parks and all those, and it'll narrow it down by X amount of search area. Uh, you know, what are the top 10 or top 20 uh, rated campgrounds in this certain area? Uh, anyway, it looks like it's going to be a really good app. I'm going to update you guys on this one uh, further on down the road because I am I have really high hopes for this one. And that's enough of the apps. Uh, let's get on to a couple more electronics that I just pretty much couldn't put in any other video. Um, let's see. I've got this is a power bank. This happens to be a black web uh, version. There are a lot of these out here. Uh, a lot of these are used by hikers. Um, I think this one's supposed to be waterproof, actually, uh, because they don't have a way to charge their phones or cameras, uh, and this way they can charge them. If you're going to go somewhere and stop and stay there for a while and not run the bike, um, this will give you a good way to charge things while you're sitting there. And then I have a couple of lights. Uh, this is a little lantern. You get these at Sportsman's Warehouse. They're 20 or $30. It's a UST, which means... Uh, precisely nothing to me but that's the brand these things are incredible there's like 500 lumens in it and uh, they last absolutely forever we have used this uh, in the tent every night for like two months straight and never changed the batteries in it these things are awesome anyway check these out sportsman's warehouse and uh, if you may have not noticed, Alaskans uh, have a problem with light. The light goes all the way away in the wintertime, and the light comes in in the summertime so hot and so hard that you don't know what to do with it. Anyway, uh, we have kind of an obsession usually with lighting. So I'm bringing a headlamp. This is my headlamp. This is a Black Diamond, 500 lumen, uh, waterproof, basically bulletproof uh, headlamp. I really like this headlamp. Anyway, it's overkill. I know it, but it's what I've got and I'm not going to buy another one. Well, that should be about the sum total of the electronics I'm going to take on this trip. Uh, if you guys have any questions or especially other ideas, I would love to hear from you. Uh, I am always learning about electronics because I'm really not that tech savvy. Uh, anyway, you guys ride safe and we'll talk to you next week. See ya.